Hi, I'm Max Brooks, and on this episode of Max Brooks Breaks Down, we discuss the most basic of first aid. Now, I've been saying for a while I wanted to get this translated into Ukrainian, and I kind of got halfway there in that some of the graphics have Ukrainian subtitles. But it's just me and Google Translate doing the best I can, so pre-apologize if they're not absolutely perfect. Enough talking, let's get to it. I am here with Vincent Vargas, Sergeant First Class U.S. Army Ranger, retired. Vincent has done two tours in Afghanistan and one in Iraq. And you can also see him on the Sons of Anarchy spinoff, Mayans. Uh, Vincent, thank you for being here and sharing this knowledge because we're going to talk about a sort of basic first aid in a war zone. And it's really for people who are living in cities who are are just urbanites, have no training. Maybe they grab the first aid kit from under their sink. If they have it, maybe they don't. So my first question to you is, uh, with almost no supplies, with no training, how do you treat uh, a cut, a laceration? Yeah, and so, you know, training, treating a cut is pretty important, but probably the number one thing I'd say is keeping it clean. Uh, anything around the house is pretty easy to get that's a clean clean anything to cover it but first of all is keeping it clean so if it got cut say on something dirty or whatnot i'd be rinsing it with clean water getting any debris out of that cut and the next thing i do i'd cover it with a dry clean dressing that would be from maybe some laundry that was in the house that's clean you know you know it's clean i'd cut it so i can wrap it around create a little bit of pressure depending on how much that bleeding uh that's happening uh, something that is a significant bleed would actually be needed to apply more pressure right? and as well as something that's not as significant you won't need as much pressure and, and that starts getting to like deeper waters that I don't want to dig too deep into but the bigger of the cut the more pressure that's going to be needed to to stop that bleeding and like I said uh, the most important thing is always keeping those cuts clean because the fear uh, is always infection and so should you should you clean the cut with a disinfectant and what can you use as a disinfectant? If you have around the house, uh, peroxide is gonna be a disinfectant that will not burn the site and it'll actually clean the, the area. Uh, if alcohol is all you have, that is a very, very good one, but that will cause significant burning. Uh, and so those are the two things I would recommend more than anything. Again, uh, if it's my kids, it's always a peroxide. If for me, if I have alcohol, I don't mind using it on myself. And so those are the two things I would recommend. A soap and water if needed as well, uh, if that's all you have. The site needs to be cleaned from any kind of issues that can cause um, infection, and infection causes a lot more serious issues. So clean the wound first with whatever you've got. Uh, wrap it in something clean, a clean cloth, uh, and then depending on how much it's bleeding, uh, apply pressure until the bleeding stops. That is correct. Okay, moving on. Uh, burns, how would you treat a burn. The burns are kind of a difficult one. Um, it really comes down to where the burns originated from. Is it just fire or is it a chemical burn? If it is just fire, uh, I would be rinsing it with cold, clean water as well. The cold water helps with kind of uh, taking away or mitigating that burn sensation. After running it under cool water for a little bit, then I'd be putting a dry, uh, clean cloth over it as well to protect it from infection as well. Another a thing that happens with burns is it's easy to be infected. The area is damaged. It is essentially an open wound. A scrape is essentially what, you're, what you've created with a burn. And so keeping that nice and clean after you've rinsed it out is the number one priority. If you have chemical on it, I would never add water. To introduce water could potentially be worse. It would be just scrape away anything that is a chemical and from there, cover it and keep it clean. So if it is a chemical burn, you do not add water, you scrape away the chemical, no matter how much it hurts, and then you wrap it in a dry cloth? That is correct. Okay. Uh, now, moving on to uh, broken bones. If you have a broken bone, uh, what do you do? How do you set it? 
So that's a tough one. And the average person wouldn't probably understand how to set a, a, a break and depending on whether you have a compound fracture or not. And so first thing I would do is sprint, uh, splint in place. Uh, a rigid splint is what is recommended. That is something you can get from a book off the shelf or a broomstick. Anything you have around the house that is a sturdy stiffness and it's called the rigid splint, you can place two of them between the area that is broken and secure it so it doesn't move as much. The movement of the bone creates more pain and could cause further damage. Uh, there's some higher level things that you'd want to get into is if it is causing um, pressure on circulation of the, of the area. Uh, if there's an, say it's a high ankle break, if it causes pressure on the circulation, you could potentially have issues with losing the foot later on because there's no circulation to the foot. And so if someone does know how to check circulation uh, through those areas, that would be very significant to understand if it's, if it's safe to keep it in place as then or having to potentially uh, reset it. And um, that is something that's a high level uh, skill set that I wouldn't recommend personally. I believe that that could cause more problems than good. So in the event of a broken bone, I would, in a close fracture, I would splint it in place so to, to avoid further movement, to avoid further damage. If it is a break where it exits the skin, same thing. I would be keeping it clean. I'd be covering it with a gauze or any kind of dressing that can be made. And then from there, I would be treating it as a break then. So after I've treated the wound, the open wound, then I'd go to the break and I'd create a rigid splint to make sure it doesn't move as much and to avoid further injury. So if we're talking about a break that has not cut the skin, if the bone is still under the skin, you wanna splint it with whatever hard material you've got. And I'm guessing keep them immobile. Don't make them move around too much. And don't uh, splint it so tight that you cut off the circulation. Correct. Uh, and if the bone has come through the skin, you're saying that we should also uh, clean it just as you would a, a regular laceration, get it clean, wrap it. But once again, not so tight, just enough pressure to stop the bleeding, but not so tight that you cut off the circulation entirely. That is correct. It's a hard subject because there's so many different levels of medical aid we can provide. But for the average person who has very little skill sets in understanding the medical field, uh, these are the basics that would keep them in a good position to, to endure that injury and to continue to survive in a very you know, survivalistic uh, situation. Right, so we're, we're, we're not talking about uh, ordinary people turning themselves into doctors and, and starting a makeshift, ho makeshift hospital. What we're talking about is ordinary people just keeping themselves and their loved ones uh, safe and alive long enough for hopefully uh, some medical expert to either come to them or maybe getting them out to an actual hospital. This is temporary basic first aid. Yes, definitely. Sergeant First Class Vincent Vargas, uh, I cannot thank you enough for all this, and hopefully we're going to get this translated into Ukrainian and get it overseas uh, for the people who really need to hear it. I appreciate it. Thank you for calling me, and anytime you need my assistance, I'm always here for you.